What's up there guys, it's Mac, hope you guys are well. Um, sorry about the content at the moment, I know it's been very scarce, um, it's just been really crazy busy at work and I've had to um, commit a lot of time to, um, to that as well as obviously family life. So, um, you know, um, I've actually got quite a lot of pickups so um, throughout that time and they're sort of piled on and I've been meaning to do a lot of videos and reviews about these products but I thought I'll just put them all into one uh, pickups video just because um, to be honest I'm not sure when I'm gonna get around to actually doing the review of these uh, products so as a result it can actually uh, be quite far down the road I mean some of these stuff I bought like months ago and I'm like I need to sort of <laughs> do some sort of video on it otherwise I'm gonna forget about it uh, so I wanted to go over some of the uh, switch pickups that I've had and also the ones I've been playing and also the, some of the stuff that I've actually not had the time to even open up like for example um, the Sega uh, Mega Drive Classics Collection I mean this is still sealed as you can see so it's a very big no-no you should not be doing that and uh, the thing is I got this for a really good deal and um, so I picked it up and um, but I just haven't got around to playing it but obviously it's like classic games so a lot of the stuff I've played in my childhood so I pretty much know most of them but obviously I do want to do a review of it as well but I mean that's what happens man you try to get a review out for one of these games and before you know it everyone's already done the reviews and everyone's moved on to the next game and it's like you want to enjoy playing it so at least I want to get the time to play it before I do a review and it's gonna be a while so I just thought I'd make sure to check this into the video now also just make sure that whenever you do buy games try not to get them and leave them on the shelf um, complete the backlog before you actually move on to the next game or at least if you have intention of playing the game then get it advice to myself before anybody else by the way because I as you can see have been very bad at following that rule myself so that's that one. Another one that I bought a while ago and never played is this one, Captain Toad, Treasure Tracker. Obviously I want to sort of get all of the Wii games uh, that were from the Wii U that were ported over, the ones that were the best ones, especially the Mario ones. And I'm still hoping and praying that they transfer over the, will port over the Super Mario 3D world because that one is meant to be epic for a 3D uh, platformer but unfortunately um, they've not poured that over and I've never actually fully played that game I think I briefly touched um, played a little bit on the Wii U but pretty much because I don't own that console and I have no intention of buying that console um, I want that phase to be um, done and dusted with with obviously the switches being the new phase and all of that scheme of the Wii U you know um, I don't really need to get that I've got the Wii but the, the Wii U, I want that to be done and I want all the best games from that to be poured over. At the moment, I've got all of the ones that I wanted from that Wii U library, other than just that game, 3D World, and probably maybe one other two. Uh, but at the moment, I think it's just 3D World that I can think of. So this was one of the games I had to get from that uh, port and it's definitely one that I'm gonna play. Um, I tested it out, but I haven't done a review on it because I haven't fully played the game yet. And it's going to have at least a few features as well, some DLCs that come through as well. So we can also play that two players as well, I believe, as well, as a new feature. So yeah, I got this game. I want to definitely play it because it's one of those games from the Wii U that I definitely want to play. So I had to get it. But I'm glad it came onto the Switch so that I can actually have a physical copy and not have to um, get a Wii U just for that game. Okay, so look at that. Look at all the Switch games, man. <laughs> That's that, that I picked up. So Dimension Drive, I don't know if I uh, talked about it. Basically, this was like a Japanese exclusive. Uh, so I actually picked it up from uh, Japan. I mean, it was available on digitally in other uh, marketplaces in the US and I believe in the uh, PAL region, but um, I wanted to get the physical copy, so I paid a little bit more for that, unfortunately. Um, it was a lot cheaper buying it digitally, but I, you know, I need my physical copies, and um, so I paid a bit more for it. I think I paid about 30, 35 quid. So, um, but meant to be a really good shoot 'em up uh, for uh, like a, like they they sort of do it over two screens, and you're meant to uh, play on both sides or flip between each side, um, and you can also play that with two players. But you always have two screens, so it's really cool. You can jump onto each dimension and swap over, and you're shooting. And obviously, if you find that what on the dimension that you're at, which is one of the sides that you're at, if you find that it's too crazy busy, you move onto the other side and you basically flip over 
onto that screen. So it's forever a split screen game. Really cool concept and a refreshing idea to shoot them up um, games. This one, I had my Star Fox. Um, I bought the back uh, um, Starlink Battle for Atlas. I actually bought the, um, I've got it somewhere. I've got the, the actual box for it with all the, uh, the Star Fox uh, ship and everything. Again, very guilty of not even touching this game. I've not played this game at all. Paid quite a lot for this game and unfortunately it dropped in price very quickly so I'm really annoyed about that but in general this game um, has really good reviews. Um, done really um, for a game with Star Fox in it, it is actually like a Star Fox game so really cool game for that but obviously it didn't do so well with all the toys and stuff and I don't think people sort of grasped it so unfortunately it did really bad. Um, overall but and it became really cheap I think I paid full price for this and it came down to I think 20 quid you can buy it for 20 pounds on CX now which is really annoying because I paid quite a lot for it but anyway um, definitely one that I need to play and um, it's meant to be really good it's like a Star Fox game apparently so looking forward to playing that uh, this one I wanted to bring up because I actually recently completed it uh, like I said I've, I've been trying to get through my backlog of games and I said that I'm going to play this game and complete both of them being a one and two before I pick up the next game that I wanted to show you guys because I wanted to at least um, at least um, get through some of my backlog of switch games uh, to warrant buying another one play adventure game but anyway I went through this game and um, what happened was that I started playing being a one and I found that I was playing on normal mode and it was stupidly hard like I'm um, <laughs> the bosses are extreme and they basically in this game it goes crazier and crazier if you think you've seen the most craziest weird creature um, and then the most highest largest enemy that you could find it just gets bigger it gets even more bigger it becomes even more powerful the enemy becomes more crazy the bosses become more crazy the levels goes higher it goes high into the skies it goes into the universe it, it, it just it's just crazy it's like it, it just keeps on expanding every single level every single boss it goes bigger and crazier I've never seen a game quite like this um, and it became quite repetitive but what I did was that because I got stuck um, on like maybe like I think I was in like chapter six or something and I was playing on normal mode and actually that's the hardest mode and I just thought you know what I've had this for so long since release I think and you know it's, it's definitely been at least two and a half years so I was like okay I'm gonna go to easy mode I actually went to very easy and guys don't be afraid to go on to the easy mode because I went to very easy and it was so much more fun I mean to be honest what I did was that I was watching YouTube and I was playing this on handheld I pretty much completed part one and part two half of part two on handheld and then I basically jumped on to the TV mode for Bayonetta 2 to finish off the rest of the campaign and I just thought I'm just gonna plow through it because I want to get it done and just generally how I try to complete games nowadays I want to sort of if I buy a new game I want to complete the story mode at least to show that um, it, you know it warrants this purchase for me it's not uh, I wouldn't value a game as much if I if I bought it and I didn't complete the campaign at least once um, I would find that it's not worth it wasn't worth my money I'd feel like I've been robbed so if I buy a game or providing that it's a good game obviously I'll make sure that it's a game that I know it's a good got high reviews as well as some ones that I would enjoy things like you know action RPG um, action games you know action adventure platformers shoot 'em ups um, those type of games you know not not necessarily I don't like RPGs per se so I don't really play those games so I wouldn't buy that because it'd be a waste of my money and I won't play it but um, other adventure platformer games um, stuff like that um, I love and obviously um, these are like your previous God of War games like how they were uh, before the new God of War came out so yeah really fun um, sort of like mindless sort of action you just basically just keep on pressing the, you know, the, the attack button and it got crazy that was what quite fun about it the levels became really crazy but it was fun just plowing through killing all the enemies or hordes of enemies and breaking through and then going to the next uh, chapter and fighting the bosses and 
I completed it. I got pictures of both completion um, stages. So definitely happy about completing Bayonetta 1 and 2. So I'm ready for Bayonetta 3. Um, so this was the next game that I was talking about. The reason why I wanted to get those completed was because I wanted to get this game. And yes, I picked it up. I paid a really good deal for it. Um, so I think I paid like less than, I think it was like 39 to 40 quid, about 40 pounds. And I got the map as well. Um, sorry, not the map, the poster. So we're gonna open that one up. But um, yeah, this is Link's Awakening. Um, Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. Um, it's a one player game. I've heard that it, it only uses uh, the joystick, uh, the analog stick and not the D-pad, which is really annoying. So I'm trying to find ways of actually playing it with an analog stick, um, without an analog stick and playing with the D-pad. And at the moment, um, there's a few ways, but you know, using like the 8 bit do M30 controller, but then, you know, the buttons are a bit weird shaped for the layout of this um, a normal SNES controller. So it doesn't really work. So it doesn't have rumble. Um, I think the 8 bit does new Switch Lite controller is meant to have two analog sticks, off stick, um, sorry, two D-pad um, controller. It's a controller with two D-pads, but they're offset D-pads and then face buttons. That would work, but then it doesn't have really like a traditional controller stand. So that probably won't work because it will hurt my hands after a while. So I just thought, you know what, I'm just gonna play it with the normal uh, Switch Pro controller and play with the joystick. And um, I'm looking really forward to this. Apparently it's a nice short campaign. It's about eight hours. So I'm looking forward to that. I want to complete it. And um, I want to basically relive, well, to be honest, I've never actually played top down Zelda games before. Uh, I've got most of them now. I think I'm, I'm basically went through all the Zelda collection, the mainline series and picked them all up. In, in, in a sort of attempt to play them one by one. I only played Ocarina of Time from my childhood and I um, absolutely love that game and I, and I completed Breath of the Wild on the Nintendo Switch, which I've got here somewhere. absolutely love that game. And I think uh, the idea is that with this new play style, um, this was a really cool idea because they basically took something that was 23 years old, I believe, 23 or 26 years old from the Game Boy Color originally came out in, or no, it, was, it came out with the original DMG Game Boy and then they poured it to the Game Boy Color as a DX version and um, had a bit of color into it, but essentially it was a very 2D sort of um, off the beaten track Zelda game. Apparently it doesn't have dungeons in the same way. It does ha it has, it really does have dungeons, but it doesn't follow the story of actual uh, Zelda. It's all about Link and um, he's washed up on this island, he's trying to escape. I want to understand what this egg's all about. So I've been trying my best not to watch spoilers and stuff like that, because I want to know what the story's about. So I'm going to definitely um, enjoy the, play this game. And the art style looks brilliant. And it reminds me a bit of like, you know, like your Pokemon Blue and Pokemon Red. So definitely looking forward to playing this game and uh, getting far in it and completing it. And um, I sort of freed up some time to play that. Again, very difficult to play these games. Um, I don't have, I'm very limited for time as, as most people are with a lot of responsibilities and commitments. So um, whenever I do get a chance to game, it's usually on my Switch. And I tend to play uh, games that I'm gonna enjoy and games that are gonna be really good and obviously top rated, highly rated games. And this is game tens and nines over, you know, across the board uh, for, um, for reviews and stuff. So definitely it's a game that I wanna play. A really cool uh, cover, as you can see inside, you've got a really cool uh, picture of the opening scene when he gets washed up onto the shore. So yeah, really cool game. I think you guys should definitely pick that up and I'm looking forward to playing that soon. Um, let's check out the poster. This, this. Wow, that is cool. It's sort of like a, um, it's like a very magical sort of like, you know, like the, the whole Zelda, like, you know, I'm, I got a Breath of the Wild poster that I want to pick up as well. Um, because again, it's all about the landscape. And this one has that sort of like mythical, um, sort of washed up onto a remote island off the beaten track, untouched. And, you know, it's like, you know, you washed up and you got to self survive and understand what's going on. And I just find that, you know, fascinating and it looks really cool. You know, you got the sort of the toy like. Um, animations that you have in this link 
and also people were, were talking about the animation being a bit too um, sort of kiddish and weird. I'm telling you, man, you guys are gonna enjoy it because it's gonna age really well, just like Wind Waker did. Um, I think that's the one, Wind Waker is the one with the cartoon as aesthetics, I believe. So um, yeah, it's gonna age really well and it's definitely a hundred times better than the original Game Boy Dot Matrix pixels. I don't care what people say, trust me, it's better. So. You know, you can't say that, oh, it's not going to be as good as the original. It definitely is way better than the original. And it's meant to be have a lot of like mod cons on it so that it make become more better for the new age. And just look at that poster, man. It just looks phenomenal. I mean, check that out. Um, that's going to go up on the wall. So look really cool. Official Nintendo Switch poster. So I think you get this with the pre-order. So um, luckily I found um, an eBay seller that's selling the game and the poster. I think I got it for just just around about £40 pounds somewhere somewhere there. So looking forward to playing that. And yeah, so you know, official right there. So Super Mario Maker 2. Awesome game. I wanted to do a review on this um, after playing it, but again, time escapes me and I just don't have the time at the moment to do a review on it but I want to sort of cover this game again a lot of people have been to the to the punch and they've done the reviews of this game and it's a bit at times it feels a bit uh, disheartening when you know that um, you know but people get review copies and they end up doing the review like days before it even comes out to the public and then basically you get the game and you don't even have a time to to play it, let alone do a review on it, because I don't want to just do a review. I can do an initial impressions, but I can't do a full on review without at least playing the game. So I can give it my actual thoughts of what this game's about. And then again, you can see the cover, it looks really cool. Nice inside art right there. Uh, my main um, message I wanted to get across for this game was the fact that a lot of people, unfortunately, when they look at this game, they say, I don't want to build games, so I don't want to get that game. When I asked them about, you know, have you got played Mario Maker 2? It's really cool. Um, yeah, a lot of people have that stigma that it's just a, um, you, you create and you create levels. Now, I personally, <laughs> I'm telling you now, I'm never going to be creating no levels because it is really hard and really confusing. I rate the people that actually do make awesome levels and you know, you could play them and they're very, very fun. And also I complete this by the way, so I complete through the story mode to make sure that again I got my money's worth. And but the thing is there's endless amount of fun on this, there's endless Mario levels in 2D. And I usually go back to, you know, one of my favourite Mario games of all time, Super Mario World. So you got all of these art styles. You got Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers 3, Super Mario 3D World, really cool. I'm hoping that they bring Super 3D World over because it's you know they're using it. Uh, new Super Mario Brothers U and obviously Super Mario Brothers uh, Super Mario World. So I love selecting Super Mario World levels and playing them. My brother was like, "Wow, I recognize this. This is like the snares, you know. It's like because that's what we grew up on, isn't it? So when we play levels that are like Super Mario Brother Super Mario World, but they're new and they're different, and you've got like say so you could play four players in the same level it's like it's like mind blown you know refreshing new levels with the art style of the Mario game that you remember growing up um, and then you, when you play with any other art styles it's just fun especially when you play the 3d world one that is like phenomenal when it comes to the graphics the the textures the colors um, just it's really eye-popping and um, awesome to watch now I want to make this clear that there is a lot of content on this game that you can download, a lot of content, and you can actually play any levels online. And you see the endless modes. So, okay, the only thing that is a bit of a gripe is the fact that when you're playing four players or any more players than actually, you know, the single player option. So you play with two players, three players or four players. At the moment, there is no um, um, online play between friends. So you can't play against your own friends, you can play random, which is annoying. And also the online at the moment is very, very lag heavy. So probably a bit difficult to play. But my main gripe is that when I'm downloading, when I'm playing an online level, you can play on a level straight away. Like you could search for a level with your own criteria and you could play the level straight away. Again, I'm sorry because this would probably be a lot better if I had actual video content of me showing the what I mean. But 
Um, this is just me summarizing it because I've actually completed this game and I'm ready to do a review, just that I haven't got a chance to do the review, so apologies again. But um, this is all from my head, so because um, I completed this a while back, I think at launch I bought this and I've completed it, and look where we are now. It's like, that is actually, it's not actually, um, it's also because Nintendo are releasing so much quality titles together at such a, a small amount of, um, a small span of time, so. It is a bit crazy, so you know I really can't. Um, a lot of the reviews, uh, time-wise, is getting a bit crazy, but I'm trying my best to get them out. So, you know, again, apologies about that. But um, yeah, what I was gonna say um, with this game, it's it's more of a case of you can play online and you can download levels to play offline. Uh, but the thing is, you can't play the levels online directly after you searched for them. Um, when you're playing with more than one player. You can only do that with, when you're playing with one player. If you want to play multiplayer, which is how I would like to uh, play Mario games with my friends and family, it's always fun to just play, jump into a four player game. Um, you need to first search for a level. You need to then download that level to your core spot. Then you need to go to core spots and then locate the level that you, that you downloaded. And then you can play the level by going to the option to multiplayer and you could set your controllers and then you could play. In itself, you can tell how long it can be because essentially you're having to download the level first and then play it with your, you know, with your friends and family um, via the multiplayer option via core sport and not directly from online uh, by pressing play. So if you don't like the level, you gotta then come out, you gotta delete it then you gotta um, download and search for a new level and then you go try it out and if you don't like it again you need to jump back out delete it and then start another one because there is limited boxes from where you can download levels so I uh, presume that eventually you're gonna run out of space and you're gonna have to delete some levels which is a bit annoying because the ones that I like I'm keeping for now and I don't really want to delete them and some of them are really crazy and some of them are really fun and some of them are stupidly hard so you gotta go for that normal uh, levels um, when you try to search for them and don't try to go for hard or extreme because it's just there's no point It just gets really hard straight away and I like normal levels and unlike uh, Super puzzle levels and keys and doors unlocking because it just gets crazy and becomes really um, like They start trolling you and um, the, the, the levels are basically just troll levels in it. They're, they they're not good for casual play and fun um, So I've noticed that in this game a lot of the levels you need to, again, so you need to download them prior to playing a multiplayer, which is a bit very really annoying. Um, I'd rather just search for them and play it straight online. And also you need to find the levels as well. So when I'm playing with friends and family, we have a lot of fun with some of the levels. It's been crazy fun. But at the same time, you need to also search for them. So there's a bit of waiting time in between. Whereas if you play something like New Super Mario Brothers U um, Deluxe on the Switch, uh, which I have somewhere here, that game you can pretty much jump straight into and play um, because the story mode is there you're following a map and it's like you know it's all there so there is no waiting time and you just basically go to the next level and you can play and no one gets frustrated waiting for levels you know for me it's fine but for casuals that I play with sometimes they don't really they start tuning out when that happens and start going onto the phone so to keep them sort of you know interest in the game you need to be playing levels straight after the next one and keeping them interested the games are really fun the levels are really fun but sometimes to find them can be a bit com cumbersome and then you gotta download them and then you might not like them or they might be really broken so you know as in you can't play four players together it's more like a one player game and um, you've just added four players in there and it's like a race to get to the end and it doesn't work um, I've seen levels like that, so it becomes essentially broken. So we, we, you know, we spend a few minutes into the game, and we realize it can't be done with four players. So we go come out of it, delete it, maybe, and then go to it, download a new game. That can be cumbersome for a lot of people, especially casuals. So they will be interested, but then they might start tuning out. So that's what I noticed. So that's the annoying thing about this game, and that's why I think New Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe has a place on the Switch because. A lot of people are saying, you know, you don't need to get that game no more because you've got endless levels here. They're not the same. The The levels that they created there were designed as a Mario game. The levels that Nintendo created themselves on this game tends to be a very designed to be more, I would say, some of the levels are adventurous and fun. Some of them are like they have this rule system where you can't jump. 
and compete level without jumping or compete level without climbing, compete level without um, you know hold um, you know losing or complete the stage with these conditions. Conditions and conditions. You need to either hit this many, um, you know, get this many coins before you've crossed the bar. Um, you need to cross, um, you need to get this and hit this many enemies, you know, X amount of enemies before you finish and hit the flag. Um, these, these condition levels where it's almost like they're basically forcing you to do something throughout the entire level and it becomes more of a training session rather than actually just playing a Mario game without any conditions. Because whenever I play a normal Mario game, I was never told to, you're not allowed to jump until you complete the end. You're not allowed to catch or you have to catch, hit this many enemies, kill 30 enemies or collect 100 coins before you cross the finishing bar. Otherwise it doesn't cross the finishing bar, you gotta go back. And I did, this becomes a bit cumbersome. It becomes like you're not playing it for fun or you're not playing it, you're, you're playing it, but you're also, you know, you're not just platforming. At the, and by that point, you're basically trying to just complete a, like he's like trying to unlock an achievement by trying to complete a task and that is not the same. Um, so I wanna make that clear that it's fun, but when you got tasks like that to do, and there's a quite a lot of levels, Nintendo create levels that are like that, I find that it becomes cumbersome. So yeah, that's my thoughts on this game. Really cool. Also the endless mode they can play, you can't play that more than uh, with more than one player, I mean, it's basically a single player game, the endless mode. So you got, you know, easy, you know, difficult and hard. We got a map and you could play random levels and it's really cool. Um, but the thing is, unfortunately, I can't play that with more than one player. Um, it needs to be just one player. I can't play two, three or four players. So it's not like Wii U um, or the new Super Mario Bros. on the you know, 3DS and DS. It's not like that or the new Super Mario Bros. Wii because those games you can play four players, up to four players um, on the adventure mode, whereas on the endless mode on this game, um, it's just mainly for one player. And it's, it's unfortunate because it reminds me of Super Mario World because you've got the sort of music and you sort of got a map. But the thing is you can't select more than one player, so it's a single player game. And that one's really cool because it locates the levels for you, providing you know you selected easy, normal, or hard endless mode. So, you know, it's a shame that you can't do that more than have more players on that. But anyway, guys, that's my um, thoughts on that game. I will try and do a review when I can. Um, this is another cool one. Um, it's called Capcom Beat em Up Collection. I think it's called Belt Action Collection. Um, but on the, the UK and the US, it's called Beat em Up Collection. I got it because it's a physical copy of Final Fight and some of my you know, favorite arcade games that they have here. Uh, Obviously, Final Fight being one of the top ones. A lot of these other ones are quite new, actually, and some of them were first time released um, in, in console form are in here. I think there's about three games like that. A lot of them have, like, two players. A lot of them have three players. Um, so that's what's really cool. You know, side-scrolling um, beat-em-ups. Absolutely love those type of games. You can see the Japanese right in there. So a really cool game to play. Love the cover. You know, check that out inside there. Got plenty of stuff there. And yeah, it's a cool game, man. So definitely um, happy to play this game. I just, uh, um, again, I haven't played any of it yet. I've just looked at it and um, checked a bit of the, the menu and that's about it. So definitely want to get uh, playing that. And again, I'll try and do a review about it. But you know, what can I say? These games are just awesome. And it's really cool to have that physical copy. So again, I paid a little bit more to buy the physical copy, but it's just something you gotta do sometimes. Um, because I don't like getting digital games. It's just, to me, it's like money down the drain. Um, anyway, so we got Namco Museum Arcade uh, Pack. I got this because of all the Splathouse games and mainly because of Pac-Man Versus. They've basically redid it for this. This is a really cool idea, concept. I think you got three guys all trying to hunt the one Pac-Man and the Pac-Man's killing, um, getting all the, you know, the, the things that he eats and then also you know has to kill the ghosts so he has his own screen so on the switch you could download a a trial version of the game where it unlocks the player two part of this game where you can be the pac-man on your own screen and you can basically eat your way through and all the three ghosts are sharing the screen and they can only see their section of the glow around the, the level and that's how they sort of get around uh playing sort of the two screen aspect of it which is really cool. So I got the game and then whoever 
is a second player has to have their own Switch and they can play it. It's a really cool party game, really fun. And on top of that, you got all these other Namco games put in there. I think I got it for a good deal, so I picked it up. You got Pac-Man Championship Edition uh, Plus and Part 2, so that's a new game of the Pac-Man series. And you got your Splatter Houses, so you know, really cool collection there. And mainly I got it for Pac-Man Versus because the GameCube version of Pac-Man Versus is really old, um, really expensive and I can't find the PAL version. Um, it's always like disc only the one time I saw it on eBay and that's gone now so I don't even see it. So I think, I don't know, it was released in PAL territories but it seems like whenever I go on eBay it's only American copies that I find. So um, I need to find a PAL copy so I just thought you know what forget that I'm just going to buy on the Switch and then a second Switch whenever someone comes around we can play this game and we can play Batman Versus, one of the best games to play. Yeah, I think this is, this is basically the only way it was ever ported. Um, the first ever copy of Pac-Man vs being poured over. Other than that, it's always been stuck on GameCube. So yeah, really cool one there. And what else have we got? So again, these two, uh, so this is Mortal Kombat 11. Bought it, want to play it. Um, haven't got around to playing much of it, um, but definitely an awesome game and an awesome port for the Nintendo Switch. Again, I wanted to do a review of it, but some reviews came out. I haven't had much chance to play it, but it looks really cool and it's portable, so that's why I got it. You know, it's no longer stuck on a console at home. This one I got to play with my friends and family, so I bought it. Haven't played it yet because I'm planning on playing it with them. Really cool artwork, and I love the fact that it brings in the entire MCU, because obviously I'm a big fan of the MCU, and the fact that they've got it all in this one game, including all the the Fox characters, so you've got the X-Men, and you've got, you know, I think you've got Fantastic Four as a DLC, and all of that, and you've got all the, you know, like, you know, the, what's his name, Black Panther and all of that, you've got Venom, you know, all these, all these characters from the, the movies, as well as obviously the Spider Universe, and you've got Thanos, you know, it's a cool concept and it's a four player beat him up and um, it's going to be really fun to play. Like me and my friends, we love playing um, a little bit of Planet, so this is going to be a really cool game to play, but I'm waiting to get everyone together. We'll play this and we'll probably complete it in a few days. Um, solid. But yeah, really cool to have that. A nice refreshed version of that game. And um, yeah, let's see what's inside. Yeah, it's nothing inside there. So yeah, that's, that's that game. So um, I was watching um, um, Adam Krolik's uh, Back to the Future, you know, um, so obviously I got all the, the Blu-rays uh, recently, I picked them all up because I watched them all on Netflix and I absolutely love these films as classic, so I picked them up physically now. Uh, so there's a nice little bundle there, I got this for £5, it's basically Back to the Future 1, 2 and 3 in the film. And then I started watching um, Adam Krolik's uh, Back to the Future. Um, game um, where he basically put them all together and to make a film out of it and um, the film was really cool to watch um, because he took this game and I just thought I'd pick it up because of that but this is Back to the Future the game this is actually a 30th anniversary edition as well it was made by Telltale Games and they basically do a really good story of the film and this one actually has like the voices of a lot of his characters and it's brilliant and it's actually what Adam Collett did was that he actually took both uh, part four and part five of the film and they basically combined them into a actual full feature length film. I think there's quite a few chapters that he combined and then he basically made Back to the Future four and five so it was really cool to watch you know you should definitely check it out and um, yeah that inspired me to buy this game I got it for quite cheap just for the collection I don't think I'm ever gonna play it because watching the the film on YouTube where he basically slipped all the clips together to make a full feature film it was so fun and it was so cool because it felt like a continuation of the actual uh, uh, film Telltale Games man I mean they did the story so well I just wish they made a full, full animation film because the artwork is a bit the animation is a bit weird uh, but you know it's still really good and really good for what they did and the story is just phenomenal I love the way they told that story in, in this game so and the way it was edited together by Adam Krolik was awesome he's also a youtuber so definitely check his um, video on that out hats off to uh, Telltale Games for doing such a really cool story and continuation of 
you know, um, a really old game, a really old film, um, you know, Back to the Future, and they basically took a really cool film and they've continued the story in such a really cool way that it could basically be uh, canon to the original movie easily. Um, I saw a wait on a Wolfenstein um, sort of flex. I picked up all the Wolfenstein games. Um, I think I got part two as well on the Xbox. I just waiting for the Xbox option rather than picking it up on the Switch because it was so expensive on the Switch, man. Um, I was like, I'm not paying that much for the Switch and I want that 4K asset as well. So I just thought I'd pick it up on the Xbox. And um, yeah, that's why uh, we are here today on the Xbox. So yeah, I think I got the old blood. I got Wolfenstein and I got Wolfenstein. Oh, so Wolfenstein New Order and Wolfenstein New Colossus on the Xbox. I got that. Um, Star Fox Command on the DS, picked that up, four quid. I think it was cheaper than that. I think it was like two pounds or something actually from CX. You know, a Star Fox game it looks really cool um, for the DS. So I thought I'd pick it up. Got all the instruction man and everything there. Nice. Okay, what else do we have? Ah, this is um, the full collection, Tintin. All the series, um, TV series. Um, so on five discs, the adventure of Tintin, now a major motion picture. So it says the complete collection, all 21 adventures. So I just thought I'd grab that because I saw that. It was very cheap, man. It was like, it's still sealed. I think I picked it up for less than five pounds. Do that three pounds something on eBay. Really cool. Classic cartoon that I used to watch back in the day. This is really cool. I got really into looking, researching this HD60. It's the Legato HD60. I got this boxed with HDMI cable, which is not in here by the way at the moment, but I got it all boxed. Guess how much? These things still go for like 150, 200 pounds, you know. It got to a crazy moment where I couldn't find it for, you know, a decent value because it kept going up to 100 pounds every time I go for biddings. Um, it's like, it's very crazy biddings on, on this at the moment. I picked this up for, I think it was 65 pounds or, yeah, about 65, 64 pounds I paid for it. And it came with this little baby. This is the, I think it's called the, the play, the play and chat headset or play party chat headset where you've got a dongle where it splits the connection so you could actually connect it up to your party chat as well as have your your game chat or the, or the console music coming out and you plug it into the device so I picked that up it came with the demo cable and obviously the, the USB type C the main reason I got this is because I want to be able to capture uh, gameplay footage as well as obviously play things like the NES Classic NES, NES Classic onto my laptop screen because uh, monitor on my uh, laptop and I want to make use of it. It's an IPS display and it's a 15.5 or 15.6 inch screen and I want to make good use of that if I'm put, if I'm going out and about and I've got my modded systems, you know, my, my NES Classic, my SNES Classic. So I want to play them on my Nintendo um, or my Nintendo Switch with the mini dock. I want to play them on my laptop screen if I'm out and about or you know other people's houses. So it's really cool that I can do that uh, with this device and I haven't, I haven't tested it out yet. I mean, I, I've tested it out to see it works, but I just haven't reviewed it yet because I wanted to get into it properly. But again, time's been very short and it's been a bit crazy, but I think I snagged a really good deal there because man, this Elgado can go for a lot. Just check it out on eBay. So I picked up a really good deal there and I'm really happy with that nice and boxed. Um, and I snagged it, it was buy it now, so I actually uh, bought it and yeah, that was it. I think um, initially uh, there was an option to buy it for £60 and I tried to buy it now and then I didn't win the bid, it got disconnected and they, they dropped it, they, take, they took it off and then it became a bidding war again and it was really annoying and, I, and ever since then I've been trying to find it for the same price and I paid the £5 more and I've managed to, um, to snag it maybe about a good three weeks after. So for three weeks straight, I was just always checking for it and I couldn't find it. 
Um, so this is really cool. This is the the Zelda um, Astro A10 um, headphones. Really cool condition. I think I bought it from um, so I bought it from Amazon. It was basically one of those warehouse deals. Um, and to me, it looks fresh. Like it's still got all the packaging and everything inside it. Um, I don't think it's been used um, at all. And I guess how much I paid for this because I think when this when this initially came out, brand new, it was like um, eighty or seventy pounds. Um, and I managed to buy this for I think it was um, twenty five, twenty four pounds, something like that. Something crazy cheap like that, and it's obviously the Breath of the Wild um, with all the the beautiful uh, look of the, the, and the colors of Zelda Breath of the Wild. One of my favorite games of all time, and obviously with with the um, the chat mixer um, edition that they have in this, it's definitely worth it because you can't find that sort of additional kit on the other Astro A10 headsets for the other systems. And on top of that, you only got a nice fresh box as well, Amazon warehouse sticker. But definitely just awesome to buy it from Amazon with that sort of um, level of um, attention to detail. Look at the inside the map, it looks so cool. Um, again, one that I wanted to do a review on, but I never had a chance to, um, purely because of time constraints. But yeah, it's all there. And you've got that nice little mixer. So you can use it on pretty much any devices. I can use this with my Elgato HD 60 um, S. Oh yeah, by the way, this one has a uh, real time lag free um, uh, watching. So you can actually plug this in to your laptop and then obviously have the gameplay coming out live. And then you can then feed the footage to your TV and then but, um, and you can watch it on TV, but on your laptop it will be lag free because it uses a USB 3.0 connection and I've got that Type-C connection on my laptop so definitely I can take advantage of that and uh, use the software that you download and you could then just sort of watch it and play from there and you can also make it full screen so I can watch anything essentially on my laptop now and the anything that has HDMI output I can plug it in to my laptop via this kit so that's what's really cool about it and I wanted to do that and it means I can plug in you know PS4, Xbox uh, One X, or I could plug in my, um, my Nintendo Switch um, straight into my laptop or my SNES Classic, NES Classic, anything with HDMI output actually. And I can use this headset with that when I'm actually doing recording and live footage. It's really cool. So yeah, I'm going to use that. I will plan on doing a video on this at some stage, but I just thought I'll, um, I'll put this in this unboxing video. Um, sorry, in this uh, pickups video because you know who knows when I'm gonna get a chance to do this. Let's see here. Check that out. That is so cool. So this lights up essentially, and you can um, plug it up to this cable here. It's got a switch, and it's got a plug. And this connects into this, and then I think it will light up. You can change colors, it's got a little button here. And um, yeah, you've got options of different colors um, from the advertisement, and this is really cool. I'm more into this type of stuff. I want to have these in my uh, room eventually. I have a nice display, um, oddball items, and um, nice display units of retro goodness. So, Nintendo one there. Um, I found a PlayStation 1, but I didn't quite like the look of that one because the colors were not what I wanted. Um, so I got this one, I'm going to set this to red and that could look really cool for obviously showing the Nintendo area. And I've got this other one here. I'm still looking for the Xbox one, can't find that one. And I don't want to buy the official one. These are like um, third party made ones, I think they, come, they came from China. So they got, um, it was a long delivery process, but <clears throat> Once they came through, the price you're paying for it and what you're getting is so cheap because a lot of these stuff can go for like, um, you're looking at um, over 30, 40 pounds, maybe 60 to 80 pounds plus shipping from USA on eBay. It's like, it's really expensive. So these ones are very cheap. They were like going for like 15 pounds free postage. And I was like, you know what? I'm getting in on this. So the main two that I got was this one here, which was Nintendo. 
Like I said that to red, it looked really awesome. And then I also got this one here, which is, any guesses? You guessed it, Sega. So I'm gonna put, make that blue and have that connected up. So it looks so cool. They basically light up and it looks freaking awesome. I'll show you some pictures about it. If I get a chance, you see the pictures, but it looks phenomenal. I'm not gonna put them on now, but yeah, that's it. And I actually forgot to add, um, I actually picked up this uh, SanDisk uh, micro SD card on my Switch. Really cool features, all of this stuff right here. Um, it's waterproof, um, temperature proof, shock proof, x-ray proof, and it's 400 gigabyte. I never got this high before. Um, my 128 gigabyte Samsung micro SD card um, broke on me, and then I had to um, use my 32 gigabyte one, and I've been struggling with space on my Nintendo Switch. So hopefully this will solve all of that. I've never gone for a really high amount, uh, but this one's got, it says 10 years warranty at the back. And SanDisk is meant to be the next best thing. Um, up, but, you know, I will use this one um, whilst I have it. And this is 400 gigabyte. I think it went on a deal on Amazon UK for 50, 52 pounds, something like that. And normally it's like 67 pounds. And the Samsung version of this is like 512 gigabyte, but it's 87 pounds. So big price difference, but it's Samsung, um, it's SanDisk and Nintendo have actually partnered with SanDisk on uh, some of the micro SD cards for the 128, 64 gigabyte ones and 512 I think. So they are there. So it's a reputable company and I bought from Amazon UK, brand new, so um, it's all sealed. So it should work and it's not gonna be a rip off one. So make sure you don't buy it from eBay and you buy it from Amazon if you are gonna buy a large SD card. I just thought this is a natural next step and this should obviously set me for all of my games i should be fine because most of my games are not digital they're physical so they should be fine and then this will be enough to download all my digital games that i do have a few of those and all the dlc for all those physical games there's a lot more of the things that i've actually picked up um that i just don't have right uh, with me right now like this video convert from you know from scott to hdmi and stuff um and I've tested it out, but I just, I don't have them, a lot of the stuff I don't have with me right now, but you know, um, this sort of stuff that I sort of gathered around that I realized that I've, it's been piling up downstairs and I know that um, I've not put them away yet. So I know that I need to do a video on them and it's just been piling, piling up and I've not had a chance to do a video. So I just thought I'll just get the most of them out of the way, especially all my Switch games. I've been loving my Switch and there's a lot of games I've been playing on that. I can't wait to get into Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. So looking forward to that. So I just got through a lot of my backlog and um, hopefully, um, this is, I sort of piled them all into one pickups video and um, talked about a lot of these games and what I've picked up recently over the last, you know, several months. And um, yeah, um, at the moment, that's all I can find on, on me. I know they're, they're, they're about everywhere because I've been picking up little things throughout the year and adding them to it. And I haven't done a pickups video in a while, um, be, just purely again because of time, but hopefully that all made sense and you guys saw a bunch of the pickups I had over several months. So um, yeah, I mean, I will try and get videos for these games done at some point. I got a backlog of reviews for some of the games that I already have on my uh, laptop that I need to sort of um, edit and chuck out. I've got a few um, holiday videos where I've been on holiday and I've done some uh, game hunting there. So those are still in the pipeline there on the computer. I know I've been talking about them for a while. I've got one in Germany and I've got one somewhere else as well. So. Uh, those need to come out at some point. Uh, just bear with me again. I really apologies for how long it's taking for some of my videos to come out. Um, but um, I do try to do one video uh, per week. Unfortunately, I haven't been doing that. It's dropped to like almost one video per month, uh, maybe less. So it's taken a while to get these videos out. But here's one that I quickly put together. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. And uh, leave, yeah, leave a lot of comments um, in the video in the video below about some of the stuff that I picked up. You know, what have you guys been playing on your Switch? Uh, what are some of your favorite Switch games? And obviously some of the other stuff that I showed, you know, let me know if you guys have been playing them and what your thoughts are. Anyway guys, hope you guys enjoyed that. And don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't really appreciate it. I really appreciate all of my subscribers. So thank you very much for that. And I'll see you on the next one. Take care guys, this is Mac.
Peace out.